I just I think you just watched what's wrong with this place. Senator Durbin comes here and talks about the importance of doing something. Now last last Thursday, when Speaker Pelosi and Secretary Mnuchin were close to coming up with a deal about what we have to do, what we have to do to stop this virus, keep this virus. Keep in mind, President of the United States first mentioned this in answer to a question with all the with all the, the elites in Davos, Switzerland, first answered a question saying, oh, this virus is nothing, well, it'll mean nothing. He's known, it took him one, two, three, four, five, six, I think eight weeks before he declared an emergency. Then last Thursday, we were supposed to start working on this. We should have, I asked Senator McConnell on this floor, I, I, I opened this door, Mr. President, and I, I pointed down the hall and I said, Senator McConnell should come back here and let's work on this bill. Whether they're actually finished in the House, down the hall, doing it or not, we should be working this. Now we've had four more days. Senator McConnell had to go back to Kentucky. I don't really know what he went back for. We ask him to stay and finish this, negotiate it and do it, to take care of stopping this virus, to take care of all the people in my state, in Illinois, in Senator Markey's state, in Senator Kuhn's state, in Senator, in, in Senator Bozeman's state, to take care of all these people that are losing their jobs and don't know what to do. Senator McConnell went back to, went back to Kentucky, wasted three days, make that four days. Today is another day we're wasting. Again, I don't know why he went back. It's three more days of people worrying. It's three more days of people uh, self-quarantining. It's three more days of businesses in Columbus and Dayton shutting down. It's the anguish that you feel if you think one of your loved ones is sick. All of that, empty airplanes, all the things that are happening, and, and we're just wasting another day. And I appreciate always the senator from Idaho bringing a parliamentary technical question up, but why aren't we doing this? Why aren't we listening to what Senator Durbin said? It's been, it's been three days since the House passed the comprehensive package. It's three days and counting for people worried about how they're going to take time off from work if they get sick. Look at all the people, think about this. You know all kinds of service workers in Arkansas. Senator Durbin knows them in Illinois. Senator Coons in Delaware, Senator Markey in Massachusetts. I know all kinds of workers that are they're feeling sick. They're making $12 an hour. They don't have any sick days. So what do they do? They think, do I go to work and I'll get sicker maybe and I'll maybe infect my neighbor or do I stay home and give up that $12 an hour, that $100 I need to make my rent? And then tomorrow face the same question. And the day after, that's what we're forcing. Instead, we're just playing games. We're, we're three days we wasted, now we're wasting another day. When a situation changes this quick, people are scared at home, people are looking for leadership. Leader McConnell, President Trump have failed the people they serve. We need to get help to people today. Let's immediately get to work on the next round of support. And let me tell you what that next round of support is. We should pass the bill today to help people with unemployment insurance, to help people with sick days, to help people with Medicaid. We should do all that. It means putting our workers first. We shouldn't be bailing out Wall Street. That'll be the next. You can bet Senator McConnell will hurry when, when the airlines come for their bailout package and hurry when the banks come for their bailout package and hurry when the big hotel chains come for their bailout package. But we've got to put money in the pockets of individuals first. First, IRS needs to send an initial check of at least $2,000 directly to every single working class, low income, middle class family who can use it so they won't get evicted or won't get foreclosed on. We don't need a corporate middleman to do that. We need to make sure every worker who needs unemployment insurance can get it. I've spoken to my governor who's done a good job on this. He served here with Senator Markey, I mean, with, with, with Senator Durbin, uh, Mike DeWine, a Republican. I've talked to him three times this week. He will help us speed up the unemployment checks so they get to workers. We may need to make sure that all workers who are eligible, including independent contract and self-employed workers. Second, we need a temporary expansion of the earned income tax credit the child tax credit for the next several years. Third, we need to hold any county company getting taxpayer dollars accountable. If we're going to help the airlines, and I think we should, Mr. President, it means the airlines can do no stock buybacks, it means no sending jobs overseas, it means no outsourcing jobs to independent, usually low-paid contract workers, food service, custodial, security workers, it means no golden parachutes for executives, it means no using taxpayer dollars that we are bailing them out with to bust unions that are trying to organize in the workplace. If they want taxpayer money, 
You commit to using it to help people who make this country work. Fourth, we need to prevent evictions and disclosure and, and foreclosures and to provide emergency rental and mortgage assistance to make up for lost wages. Millions of Americans are one lost paycheck away from eviction or foreclosure. You, you all know the number. 40% of Americans don't have $400 extra to fix their car. Well, they also, if they lose their paycheck, they can't pay their rent. We've got to make sure that we need to look at canceling some amount of student loan debt. We know millions of Americans aren't going to be able to, we know millions of Americans aren't going to be able to make student loan payments through no fault of their own. Canceling debt will allow people to get back on their feet. President Trump, since January 22nd, has had chance after chance after chance to get ahead of this public health crisis. In fact, two years ago, I sent him a letter saying, why did you fire Admiral Zimmer? Zimmer, why did you eliminate the office that was in charge, 40 people in the White House, that was in charge of surveilling the world to look for potential, pan, potential pandemics? Why did you fire them? Please reinstate them. He ignored the letter. He hasn't explained why he eliminated that office. He would have known way before January about this potential pandemic, and he might have, at the urging of that office, if it still existed, he might have done something about. The President's failed in this. Congress can't make the same mistakes. We need to get ahead of the crisis facing family budgets before it's too late.